first of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Hines for pointing out that um, I hadn't talked about suicidal behavior with um, LGBT populations. Uh, that was not intentional at all. It was just an oversight on my part. So with that, I went back and pulled some information because I do think this is an important um, area to discuss and for you to know a little bit about. Now, given that I'm, it's coming after we talked about suicidal behavior across the lifespan, I'm not testing you on this information, at least if I'm not for my um, summer 2014 class. If you're taking this at a later time, I probably am testing you on this. But um, I wanted to share some of what we know just so, so you know and, and are aware of it. Now, most of what I present here, I must admit, is um, based strongly off of the American Association of Suicidology fact sheet and also the SPRC um, Youth LGBT Manuscript. So that's um, those are my primary sources for this information. Now, you may be wondering, why am I focusing on youth? You know, why just youth? Well, a couple reasons. Well, the first is that, of course, the media has recently really been focusing on uh, youth suicide. And with that, um, most of the research that's out there is on LGBT youth. There's a lot less on um, older LGBT individuals and suicide. So this isn't to say that other age groups are not at risk. They likely are. Um, there's just not as much research on it. So you'll see I do have some research on older groups I just threw into this presentation, but there's just not as much as there needs to be. It's still an area that needs a lot of research. Also, I should mention that much like we have seen with other age groups, what's true for one part of the age or lifespan, one age, may not be true for another. So because of that, these findings may or may not generalize to other groups. So what we see is true for youth may not be true for LGBT adults or older adults. So what is it that we see with youth? Well, what we see is that there is um, definitely a a um, increase in suicide risk. So among lesbian, gay, and bisexual youth, as well as those who are unsure of their sexual orientation, um, we know, as you can see, it's debated with different studies, but um, they're at least twice as likely to have prior suicide attempts, and at least one study has found 3.4 times more likely than their peers to have um, prior suicide attempts. Now, we know very, very little about um, LGBT status and death by suicide, and the reason for this is that sexual orientation is not indicated on death certificates. So because of this, it's very difficult to um, piece that research together to know if someone was um, LGBT. So most of the research that we have is looking at ideation or attempts. There's virtually nothing on um, death by suicide, at least that I'm aware of. Now, where the greatest risk really seems to be uh, for this group is with transgender individuals and suicide. So these studies are looking um, at adults and so not just youth, but what they found is that 83% um, of transgender individuals have had thoughts of suicide and 54% have attempted suicide. Uh, so that's the Dean study. Um, the uh, Kennedy study found a little bit lower of a ratio They or percentage. They found 30.1% of transgender individuals reporting having attempted suicide compared to 4.6% of adults in the U.S. So you can see, given that comparison with other adults in the U.S., this is a very, very high suicide attempt rate. Um, and factors that seem to be particularly associated with suicide attempts in this group are um, age, so being younger, uh, depression, history of substance use, uh, and also discrimination and victimization. So overall, what are the risk factors for LGBT youth? Well, I one 
point that was made in the AES um, fact sheet that I thought was really good is that being LGBT is not in and of itself a risk factor, but rather it's the minority stressors that LGBT individuals encounter, those are the risk factors for suicide. So the strongest risk factor is prior behavior and that's suicide attempts. So it made sense. We've talked before about, you know, the best predictor of future behavior is prior behavior and that suicide attempts are a very important risk factor. So when you have a group that has higher rates of suicide attempts, you're also going to have a group that's at higher risk of suicide in general. Also, LGBT youth have um, higher rates of depression, anxiety, conduct disorder, and other psychiatric disorders. So those are all associated with suicide risk. So in general, mental health is um, one of the risk factors that is likely at play. And then also, more than 75% of LGB youth report having been verbally abused, and roughly one in seven report being physically attacked. So that's where we get into some of the um, some of the bullying that um, has been w well publicized and reported on, but with that bullying potentially um, being a risk factor for suicide. Now there are some protective factors, so there are some things that can help uh, reduce the risk of suicide. So one is family acceptance. So if you if the family is more accepting of the individual. Um, that does reduce suicide risk. And how we know that is actually by the flip side. So for an LGB youth, when they're rejected by their family, they're more than eight times more likely to report a prior suicide attempt. So how accepting the family is seems to be really important. So one of the ways that we can help um, reduce suicide risk in this group is by really focusing on connectedness and belongingness, going back to Joyner's theory. So ensuring that the family is um, connected with the individual, as well as that that youth is connected with adults in the community and also with the school. So you want to make sure that the individual is well connected. So what can be done? Uh, the Suicide Prevention Res or Resource Center, there we go, has some recommendations. So one is to provide information to mental health professionals about um, LGBT youth and suicide in order to help them um, know what to look for and know that there's an increased risk. Uh, include information about suicide and LGBT issues in school public awareness materials. Identify LGBT inclusive services and providers so you know who to refer LGBT youth to um, if they are suicidal. Include LGBT youth in program development and evaluation. So if you're going to do a uh, suicide prevention program, involve the people that you're targeting. Um, it's a common mistake that people make when they um, are creating an intervention and they don't talk to the, their target audience. Um, it leads to an intervention that doesn't fit. So involving the LGBT youth in the development and evaluation. Peer-based support groups. Um, I was recently at the SAMHSA grant um, suicide um, prevention conference and one thing there were several youth panels, and one thing that kept coming up time and time again with youth is that they said that they really appreciated and benefited from peer-based support groups. So as a mental health provider, that's a little scary at times because we like to have full control over treatment and you know having a, a support group that's really peer-based is difficult for us to accept because we lose some control. But at least anecdotally by those students' report, um, that was really helpful. Now, many of these, most of these were not LGBT youth, but they were youth who had dealt with um, suicide crises. So I thought that that report was meaningful. Um, implement life skills training in order to help, hopefully help reduce uh, stress and discrimination. Support the parents and guardians of LGBT youth. So again, we saw that that um, being ostracized from the family increases risk of suicide. So helping the parents um, 
with you know the challenges of having a son or daughter who um, identifies as LGBT is really going to be important um, because it's a transition for those parents. They may not have been expecting this. So helping support the parents and guardians so they can help support their um, son or daughter is really, really important. And then also emphasizing the protective factors relevant to LGBT youth. So we all have fat, we all have some protective factor. So trying to maximize those, you know, if someone is well connected, trying to maximize that in order to help buffer against some of the um, potential negative uh, risk factors that could um, otherwise get in the way.